everybody, Troy here. Uh, sitting next to me is Luke with Zero Motorcycles. We're here to talk about battery tech, and not just for motorcycles, cars, alternative uh, fuel vehicles in general, and just where the future lies. But let's start with the present. Tell the world what it is you've done with the current battery system uh, in the current lineup of Zero Motorcycles. When I began in 2011, the bikes carried enough battery for something like 40 miles of range. In my first iteration, we went up by a factor of something over 2x, uh, and then my next iteration we went up by a factor of close to 2x again, and over 2x on the dirt platform. If you look at our battery design, it's the highest percentage cells. There's the least amount of dead space and weight to support this given amount of cells. And we were able to do this by achieving a novel packaging method combined with this incredible potting technique now that gives them extreme robustness and weatherproof functions. One of our tests was actually sinking a battery to the bottom of the ocean overnight to see how it does, <laughs> <clears throat> and it did fine. I look at a gas engine now um, as a bit of a Rube Goldberg comic, <laughs> like uh, if you want to follow the energy path, you could you follow it from the fuel tank through the fuel pump to the fuel line, and then uh, to the to the injector, and then you've got this valve system that opens, you know, and uh, it's got cams supporting it to control it, and uh, springs that you rely on to close this, and then you take in some mixture and you compress it and burn it, and then as a byproduct of this thermal expansion when it's coming down, you get to cool that mixture and extract some relatively small, almost like a byproduct, uh, becomes torque. And then you take this torque, and since this device can't natively produce torque from a start, that's why you have to have a starter motor or kick it to even get it to work at, at low speed. So you, you have to limp this through systems like a clutch and a transmission to even get functional performance, you know. With an electric motorcycle, all of that is unnecessary. With electricity, it's harder to store the energy, you could say, than, than gasoline, where it's so energy dense. But what you get to do with it is transform that electrical energy into the amount of torque you want uh, over the speed range you want, simply by designing a motor to support that. So if you want 500 foot-pounds of torque or something, you can do that with an electric motor just by designing the right motor. If you want milder performance, you can do that too. There's no theoretical cap limit on electric motor performance. There's some electrostatic motors that run in vacuums that are greater than 99%. If you have the right engineering, you can remove most all of those parasitics. Nominal is the energy that you could get out of the pack if you didn't have voltage sag. It's kind of like your best case scenario. The max rating is based off of some IRS code policy on how to measure electric vehicle battery pack capacity for the purposes of getting some kind of tax rebate or something. It has no bearing on the energy that you get out of the pack. It just is because perhaps someone at the IRS didn't know better. So can you talk more about just the chemical makeup that we that we currently yeah. are looking at? At this moment, our generation uses this NMC cathode material. It's the same cathode material, same style, I should say. Everyone uses different ratios and everyone uses different particle geometries, which have tremendous effects on performance. Say, what's some experimental technologies that are on your radar screen that uh, may or may not be well, what we call the future of electric technology or battery technology. Solid, solid state electrolytes hold a lot of promise, both with removing potential safety concerns around uh, liquid electrolyte lithium ion batteries, as well as potential for improved energy densities through not needing to make a system that contains a liquid so you can reduce uh, packaging overheads. There's metallic magnesium based batteries because, unlike metallic lithium forms, magnesium doesn't tend to form dendrites, which is excellent. Uh, there's also sulfur-based anode materials as well as silicon-based anode materials. The limit is something like greater than 10x hmm. over where we are today with batteries. Someday there will be thousand-mile charge electric motorcycles and that'll be a normal thing. 
it, and it may only be a few years from now. There's a, a lady called, I think her name is Anne Marie Satke, and she has a battery company called something like Satke 5 or something. She has working solid state laminated film battery cells, or at least she's claimed I haven't been able to get a sample yet, that are over a thousand watt hours per kilogram. That's a pretty exciting one because she's claiming she's already got a next gen working scalable system. She's looking for money to get um, the ability to scale it up right now. Uh, it would mean our five brick bike could get a thousand miles range on a charge or a dirt bike with the smallest battery in it could go something like 200 miles on a charge or something. So that would effectively eliminate any advantage gas vehicles had. The acceleration, power, top speed, and, and all of those things, uh, there's no way internal combustion can compete. When you have to reject so much heat, but you still have the same materials like aluminum pistons and things, you come across these thermodynamic limits. You won't beat those. Electric motors will destroy the relevancy of gas vehicles in racing or high performance or anything. The only time you'll see them used is at historic races or something. <laughs> People that uh, are interested in doing the what what's now performance irrelevant, but uh, has nostalgia for them or something. If you look at missions, like, that's a a low budget effort done by some folks in San Francisco, uh, making their own electric project bike, basically with with mostly five year old technology that that's used in that vehicle. If if they were to choose to make a modern vehicle on a similar budget to what's used in the urban PTMs, there would be nothing internal combustion could do to become competitive again.